Uh, excellent introduction. Excellent review of cases already. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uribe. Thank you, Dr. Lynch. Uh, thank you so much for having me over and uh, allowing me this opportunity to present the uh, Miami experience that we've been uh, we've been playing with AR now for a few years, kind of uh, trying different things and developing different features, uh, almost from the uh, uh, scratch. Uh, the title is not to offend anyone, but more to just kind of provoke thought. I'm probably myself in between of the two age groups. And so uh, uh, probably at, at this point, by the end of these two talks, there are people in the audience that are either excited and want to try the new technology or some that are intimidated. They're like, what the hell is this? We just learned how to use navigation. All of a sudden now we have to convert to this new thing, augmented reality. Well, that's just the truth of the matter. Anytime there's a new technology, everyone falls on that adaptation curve, either an early adapter or a late boomer. And hopefully with this presentation, I'll be able to show that the augmented reality is not really a, a new technology that, to be intimidated by, but rather just a change and in interface of the current already existing technologies. Nothing pertinent to this presentation. Uh, this has already been uh, introduced that there's virtual reality and then there's a spectrum of augmented reality. And of course the ultimate augmented reality is something that's integrated into the real world in a way that you almost feel it almost feels seamless. It respects the boundaries, respects the um, uh, geometry of the room, other objects, um, and that provides a real, truly immersive experience. And that's what the ultimate strive for augmented reality is. Uh, we all know that neurosurgery, spine surgery, is a very precise field. And, you know, and the strive for being most precise, mostly efficient all of these new tools, new uh, toys that have been developed, and they occupy a large space in the OR. They require additional screen placement, as you can see in the picture in the middle, as I mentioned already. A lot of times the surgery is performed with the surgeon looking away from the surgical field. And that's where these glasses come in. Can they revolutionize that and kind of help navigate the surgery a little easier, a little better, maybe a little faster? There's also the concept of minimally invasive surgery. Can augmented reality facilitate that? Of course, they won't change possibly the uh, incision size or how much the decompression the actual person needs or how much work the person needs. So that's irrelevant for the technology itself. But hopefully with the uh, enhanced interface, the timing of the procedure may be enhanced and maybe even the control of the procedure. Also have to think about uh, occupational hazard to the surgeon. Uh, already been demonstrated that use of navigation, robotics, and hopefully AR uh, will reduce the overall fluoroscopy exposure uh, to the spine surgeon as well as you know we have to consider postural capabilities and just longevity of the procedure and how long the surgeon can last with those kind of conditions uh, if you remember this movie from uh, 2018 the black panther see if it plays here yeah, uh, where ar type of capacity was depicted with the spine being pulled out and manipulated and now fixation was made well uh, in a way um when I saw that, I'm like, wait a second, you know, back just a year prior, 2017, we were doing the same thing. And of course, this is more of a comic relief. We're not fixing spines like this, but that's when we all started looking at that. Um, and that's been in our program already for quite a few years. Uh, we've tried different modalities, for instance, here, before we get too comfortable, we start using a preoperative planning and the video demonstrates how augmented reality image to superimposed on the patient corresponds in terms of the needle placement to standard fluoroscopy, but also the 3D uh, feature of it kind of makes it a little more pleasant, less x-rays. And just another video showing the thoracic the spine when uh, usually localization may be even more challenging with the ribs in place and bigger body habitus, taking x-rays, trying to count, and just another video. Not a very good quality, but those are early videos of showing that. Of course, um, early on we tried to see, okay, just having the uh, superimposed AR view, not navigated, just a 3D picture superimposed. Can we put screws in? Try and do that in the lab. The workflow was tremendous in terms of you don't have to look away. You're looking at the spine, working with the instruments, everything in front of you. Of course, lacking the navigation uh, was a big kind of a fail to this type of approach. But you can see on the video, that's how uh, the initial view was, just following the lines and thinking, okay, let's, uh, let's trust it, see what happens. On the post-up outcomes, you know, overall exciting. But then when you see screws like this, obviously you have to reassess and see what else needs to be done. And the navigation portion, just like what we use already in the usual stealth navigation, is a big, big portion of uh, AR world as well. You have to have a navigatable uh, device. 
Now, next was to demonstrate that AR, augmented reality, is not this uh, new technology with astronomical costs that's going to be hard to integrate and people which is going to um, um, you know, occupy it in terms of uh, different companies just locked into certain areas. Here, we brought in five different instrument sets and showed that with 3D uh, adapters, just uh, 3D printed adapters, uh, we were able to um, link it to just simple augmented reality system. Uh, from Taiwan and demonstrating on the, you know, on the mannequins, not the real uh, um, spine, but still showing that the uh, accuracy with navigation and any instrument set system can really be increased. Here we just, out of 60 screws, had two mildly breached, so pretty uh, good outcome overall. Uh, and this was already introduced by Dr. Lynch. You know, there's augmented reality, what we see as a, a 3D world, uh, spatial computing, immersive experience, almost feels like real, but an X-ray vision, right? Versus just a heads-up display. And then also, what else can you use the augmented reality before uh, taking it to the OR? Patient interaction. So these two pictures, let's say, are 100 years apart. A doctor's giving a consult to a patient, and not much has changed. How many times have you been in a, um, a clinic and tried to show an image to a patient, explain where everything is? For 10 minutes, they just go, all I see is the butterfly or a face or a demon or something. And it's just all black and white and gray to that. Having the 3D picture can really revolutionize the way we give those consults. For instance, here, there was a, a family from Italy that came over and they went to talk about their scoliosis. I've loaded a 3D holographic image of the whole spine to this 14-year-old kid. And right away, and that's where the millennial part comes into the title, right away he knew exactly what to do. He was, it was so easy for him to just interface with it. He understood what's going on exactly, where the angles, which way he's bending, which was before they only saw the 2D films, even not even on the computer screen. That kind of led to a project that we've collaborated with UM uh, and Magic Lead, where we tried to create a system for um, uh, patient consultation you know, in the clinic. We've come a long way since the original image, as you can see, this big gray blob. And actually, the system was pretty good where I just couldn't resist and take it to the OR and test it out off label and vary on the uh, PL. Now, back to the point of um, just heads up display versus augmented reality. Can heads up display be something that's in, in, in intermediary for those that are maybe too intimidated by a, AR or uh, the initial interface of having this floating uh, holographic image is too distracting. I think heads up display is also a good option. And also while this was all done before the most recent um, you know, augmented progress with an FDA clearance, congratulations to them, very well done. Uh, when we could bring the uh, heads up display and try it on the procedures where usually utilize screens, anything, whether it's fluoroscopy based, you know, ACDF, or a navigation-based instrumentation, or endoscopy, you know, we've published the, I guess, technical note using the uh, heads-up display for an endoscopic case uh, two years ago, from two years ago, and it's just a video showing a quick video through the glasses. I'm sure you can't really see anything through it, but that's just showing what the video, what the screen is usually uh, portraying. But now you have a direct line of sight uh, instead of looking away. And now routinely our residents uh, get to experience that in the OR and have the heads up display, direct line of sight while they see their hands moving in and out, which is also, you know, sometimes for a new um, a trainee, it could be very uh, discoordinating, looking at the screen and look, you know, moving your hands. Uh, trying out in different cases, of course, once you try the one, you know, any other procedure can become uh, easy to interpret. You know, now onto bigger cases, single stage lateral approach, you know, um, in this particular video, we don't have a robot, but robotic system would make it even easier. With navigation, the same thing. Patients in lateral position, maybe not comfortable for many people to uh, instrument that way. And here we're using stealth navigation system, but instead of looking at the screen, the heads-up display provides the same information and allows for continuous kind of action by right? looking and turning instead of uh, looking away, adjusting, and coming back and doing that work that way. And also, uh, we're getting so comfortable. We're now doing simultaneous while one person does the exposure for the lateral approach, and a trainee is doing an instrumentation from the side. And let's say if I'm doing um, an anterior to solace approach, I'm wearing the same uh, heads up display. And while I'm actually doing my exposure, I can see on the display what the resident is doing. I don't need to look at the screen, I don't need to look away. All I have to do is flicker over night just to make sure they're in the right trajectory, in the right orientation, and uh, I don't have to interrupt my workflow at the same time supervising well, give them feedback. Um, a demonstration of an instance case, 
this is uh, an epidural lumbar view, probably not a view that many have seen or if anyone, uh, in an occult CSF leak patient who was allergic to a contrast or could not get a CT uh, myelogram to really identify what's going on. And meanwhile, a true picture clinically showing that she did have a CSF leak somewhere, most likely related to uh, uh, lumbar puncture during her pregnancy. In this particular case, you know, utilizing minimally invasive approach so the microscope could brought in, but at the same time, uh, a tiny endoscope that has its own uh, video output. Putting those together allowed for simultaneous manipulation of the scope view and endoscope view kind of made the surgery a little more uh, uh, feasible, allowing to find the leak and sealing it off without making a big exposure over the rest of her lumbar spine. And as you know, most recently, uh, uh, Augmedic finally made it to University of Miami as well. And Dr. Wang in this uh, article here talks about the benefits of it. So a lot of excitement, a lot of things are happening. And you know, all these big technological words that are gonna be uh, prevalent in the next 10 years, augmented reality, uh, fixed reality, artificial intelligence, uh, spatial computing, iPhone 12, you know, people will get scared of that. Uh, but I hope that um, it will also be easy to show that it's quite adaptable, it provides a nice interface, and it's very doable. Thank you.